Okay, hello, welcome everyone to a live stream here on my film class. It's great to have people here. Um, welcome to this new live stream format on the channel. Um, it's something I'm going to be trying out over the next few weeks to see whether it's something that people like. Um, one of the things that um, I found on the videos was that when people are asking questions and things about After Effects, um, it can be quite hard to respond and to um, relay a, a a message back to you that might um, actually tell you what you need to need to do, uh, and it can be much better to actually show you visually what I mean uh, and to respond to some of your questions and queries. Um, so the aim of these kind of live streams is that each week I'm going to be focusing on a different topic or a different content within After Effects or perhaps Premiere Pro if people are also interested in that. And we're going to just be exploring different things and feel free to ask me questions or, um, you know, ask and leave comments uh, or say hi on the chats. Uh, and I'll try to answer questions. Um, obviously, I can't guarantee that I'll know everything, but if it's definitely related to the topic that we're talking about or something like that, then it'd be great um, to work through some of those things together and hopefully provide you with somewhere where you can um, get help for your queries. So what I was going to do today is we're going to cover some of the basics uh, for Adobe After Effects, specifically the animation for Adobe After Effects. Um, so hopefully you have already opened um, the software up before and you are slightly familiar with how to use Adobe After Effects. But if not, that's totally fine too. We're going to be um, taking it right from the basics today. Um, we're just going to be learning how to create some simple shapes and how to animate the basic properties around those shapes. So do let me know uh, if you have any questions while we go along. Uh, and let's jump right in to Adobe After Effects. Um, before I start with that, one other thing to mention is if you're interested in Adobe Photoshop, I am also going to be doing a weekly live stream on my other channel, which is my design class. I just finished one right there um, just now. Um, so that was why I'm slightly late, so I do apologize for that. Um, but um, yeah, if you're interested in learning Photoshop, which is uh, all about graphic design and um, how to edit images and photos, then uh, do check that out. That's also going to be available um, um, afterwards. So what um, another thing to point out is that these videos will be available afterwards. So if there are any things that I go over too quickly or you want to be able to revisit, then those will be available on the channel under the live um, panel. Perfect. Okay, so let's jump into After Effects. So first of all, um, we're going to create a new composition uh, just by going here. And I'm going to just create a basic HD composition um, within After Effects that we're going to be able to create our simple shapes on. I'm going to reduce the duration because I think 30 seconds is a little long. So I'm going to actually set that to five seconds for now. So that's going to be the duration of our timeline. Um, and then I'm going to change the frame rate to probably about 25. Um, I don't need no 29 FPS for this. And then we're just going to press OK. So we've created our composition with an uh, Adobe After Effects. Uh, and now we're going to actually create some shapes. So what I'm going to do is go to the shape tool. So as you can see at the top here, you can create different shapes. If I press on this, I've now created um, have the ability to create a rectangle. But if you hold on it, you can also create other shapes such as rounded rectangles, ellipses, polygons, and stars. We're going to start with a simple rectangle and just learn how we can animate that um, in After Effects today. So the best way to create a shape is you can either hold and drag, uh, and that will allow you to create the shape, or you can just press once uh, for certain shapes such as the polygon tool, um, or maybe they've removed this feature actually. I think the last update did remove that feature. Um, it used to be that you could just press and you could choose how many um, different um, points you wanted within your shape. So for example, whether you wanted to create a pentagon or a hexagon. Now it seems that you need to draw it and actually change that information within the shape properties window. As for example, I could change it to six and now we have a hexagon in our scene. I'm going to quickly delete that. Like I said, we'll quickly start with a rectangle. I'm also going to delete the shape layer. So I'm going to quickly create a rectangle, just a nice, and let's create a square. So I'm going to hold shift, and that's going to make sure that all sides are even, and we get a regular square. 
So now that we've created our shapes, there are a few things to know initially about the shape itself. Um, so you can adjust the shape by going to the selection tool and you can use any of these markers on the side of our shape in order to transform the shape and actually change the size of our rectangle or square. So as you can see, it's no longer square because I've changed that. But if I press shift, it will automatically snap back to a square. You can also be more precise. So if you're looking to create a square that has um, uh, a certain dimension, you can change that in the shape transform properties. But uh, better than doing that is going to the size itself. So at the moment, it's calculated in pixels because I'm using a HD composition. So it's 1920 by 1080, 1920 um, uh, horizontally and 1080 vertically. Um, if I wanted to have a square that was 400 pixels by, let's say, 400 pixels in the Y, so we're going to have a square. As you can see, it's automatically changed it for both because it's linked. Um, however, if you want to have different sizes for the X dimension, for example, 200, as you can see, I can now alter the X axis independently. Let's stick to our square. So I'm just going to go 400 and we might as well link that in case we decide to change the size in the future. You can also change some of the other basic parameters for the shapes in this shape properties window. Um, so you can change the stroke color. At the moment, there is a stroke of two pixels. So if I just click off our shape, you'll see that there is a stroke. I can just zoom in by pressing Command and Plus, uh, or Control and Plus for Windows. If you want to remove that uh, stroke to your square, you can just type in zero for the stroke width. And as you can see, it's now removed that stroke. Um, you can also change the line caps. That's if you're using a stroke um, and the fill color, which is obviously quite important, what the shape actually looks like. Let's just choose a random color. And now we have our shape. Perfect. So this, all of these settings, you can also apply for the different shapes within the shape tool. Obviously, some of them might come with extra features, such as being able to change how many points you have on your pentagon or hexagon uh, or your polygon. Um, and you can also obviously customize those uh, features. So we've covered what all of these markers do. There's one other important marker to mention, and that is the anchor point for the shape itself. And that is this small icon in the center here. The anchor point is very important when it comes to animating our shapes in After Effects, and in fact, any layer uh, in After Effects. Every layer that we create, so if I go to the timeline panel here, if I right click, I can create a new um, object or a new layer of some description. I can create text, solid, a light, a camera, null object, any of these things, the shape layer, which is what we've just created. Um, every one of those layers is going to have an anchor point. The anchor point is important. If you're familiar with Photoshop um, and you're familiar with Free Transform, Free Transform's actually got a reference point. Um, it's not automatically enabled if, um, if you d download Photoshop for the first time. But the reference points, or in this case, the anchor point is essentially where our uh, animation of particular properties originates from. So if I change the scale of, a, of this square, it's going to scale from this point. You can move this point around by using the pan behind tool in After Effects. The pan behind tool is just at the top here. The shortcut is Y. Um, if you're, uh, that's both for Windows and Mac. So you can just hold and move that anchor point around. As you can see, it won't automatically snap to any of the sides or the corners or even the center of our shape. In order to do that, just hold Command or Control on your keyboard. And as you can see, it's going to try and snap to any of those markers or even the center lines for our shape. Uh, if you want to center it, it will center. If it's outside and you want to quickly center it, hold command and actually double click on the pan behind icon itself. And that will automatically center the anchor point to the shape. So the basic properties we're going to try and animate for the shape uh, in today's live stream are going to be scale, position, rotation, and opacity. Um, animating anchor points is slightly more advanced, so we're going to do that on another video, um, just because I don't want to confuse you with too many things. 
However, these initial properties um, you'll be able to animate without actually having to adjust the anchor point, which is great. So what I'm going to do to start off with, I'm just going to zoom out so we can view our entire composition. I'm going to try and center this shape. Uh, so to do that, we can go to the align panel on the right. Some of these might be collapsed, by the way. For example, the properties are align. Just press on it and you'll be able to open it up. We're going to press on this center one so we can align the shape horizontally and we're going to align it vertically to our composition so it's in the center of our composition. So we're going to start with animating the position of our shape. Now there's a few things to be aware of when you're animating the position of a shape in After Effects. You can actually animate the position of the layer. So within the timeline panel, we have the layer here, but you can also, for shapes specifically, animate the position of the shape within the layer. Uh, it can be a little confusing. If you're trying to morph shapes and things are flying around all over the place, this could potentially be the issue. Um, so in order to find those two different areas that we can actually animate uh, shapes, the first one is under contents. So contents is the contents of this shape layer. So we have currently a rectangle in the shape layer. You can actually add multiple layers, <coughs> sorry, multiple shapes to a layer. Um, so we could also have another rectangle within this one shape layer, if you should choose. I'm just gonna expand the rectangle, which is this rectangle one that we have here. And as you can see, we have several parameters that we had a minute ago under the properties panel. So we can change the path of the rectangle, which is in this case, the shape, uh, the size and the position of the rectangle. Uh, but we've also got the stroke, which we uh, chose to turn off a minute ago. Um, or we've got the fill, which is the color or the composition of the actual shape. And finally, we also have transform, which is the transform properties of the shape. As well as this, so this is all under the contents, we also have transform. These transform properties are for the entire layer. If you had multiple shapes within this shape layer, this is where it gets slightly confusing. So do ask me if this gets too confusing. Um, if you had multiple shapes within this layer, the transform for the layer would affect all of the shapes within that shape layer. If you had, um, if you adjusted the transform properties within the shape layer itself, so for example, this rectangle and the transform under the rectangle, it would only affect the rectangle itself. So it's something to be aware of if you're changing the shape, uh, the, the transform for the layer, the whole layer, and it's affecting everything and you're confused, um, then you'll have to, if you want to animate them individually, do them within the shape. If you create multiple shapes and not under the same layer, this can be one way to uh, get around this and keep it nice and simple. But if you wanted everything to be within one layer, then you just need to be aware of this. So for this, what we're going to actually do is um, animate the transform properties for the entire layer. Um, you can, it's the process is very similar for actually animating within the shape layer itself. All of the same features are here, um, but we're going to be animating just to keep things nice and basic for the entire layer for this case. So the trend under the transform, we have anchor point, which is that sensor um, point that we have here from which all of the animations that we're going to be um, uh, animating originate. We have position, which is the coordinates, the position of our shape within our composition. At the moment, we aligned it to the center horizontally and we aligned it vertically. This means if I have a composition, uh, it's gonna get slightly mathematical just to warn you. If we have a composition of 1920 by 1080, uh, 1920 horizontally and 1080 vertically, which is just a standard HD composition. Half of 1920 is 960. And this is where our anchor point is currently positioned. So that's the position of our shape. And the uh, ha uh, half of 1080 is 540, which is the vertical position of our shape within our composition. The scale refers to the scale of the layer. So remember, this is not the scale of the shape, it's the scale of the entire layer. So the scale of the layer is at the moment 100%, by 100%, the first value being the X dimension, the second value being the Y dimension. Both of these are displayed as uh, percentages. Just like we could change the size of the rectangle earlier, 
At the moment, it's linked, which means that we have X and Y. If I change one of them, it's automatically going to change the other. So if you want to undo that, just click on this button and you can change only the X or the Y. Next, we have rotation. And remember, this is for the entire layer, so we can rotate the entire layer. So we can either rotate it by degrees. We have 360 degrees. Uh, if we go over 360 degrees, you'll notice that one times appears. The one times essentially means that we've done one full rotation and now we're adding on an extra 45 degrees. Uh, if you went lower, so if you want to spin the other way, it's going to go into the negatives. If you're wondering how I'm actually adjusting these values without actually pressing on them and typing in specific values, you can hover over any of them and just drag from left to right in order to change those uh, degrees. And this is for any blue property that you see within After Effects and many other applications such as Photoshop. Opacity, the final option that we have, refers to the transparency of our entire layer. So in this case, the transparency is 100%, uh, the opacity, excuse me, so that means that the layer is fully um, non-transparent. We can see everything within our layer. If we reduce the opacity to 0%, we can't see anything. If it's 50%, we can only see half of our layer. So at the moment, we're going to just set everything to, um, to the basics. So we're going to have 100%. Like I said, we're going to ignore anchor points, and we're going to start with position for this um, demonstration. Um, so position obviously refers to the position of the layer within the entire composition. Um, After Effects essentially works with this timeline. So we start at zero seconds and we go to five seconds. My composition is five seconds long. I can animate something to start at any point within those five seconds. Each second is broken down into frames um, and each of and that frame rate is what you determine when you create your composition. So for example, if you have a frame rate of 25 frames per second, there are going to be 25 frames, so 25 stops within this section until you reach one second. And then there's going to be another 25 and another 25. If you had a frame rate of 29, which is more common in uh, America and other places, um, you'll have 29 stops between each second. And for each of those frames, you can animate um, something different. So in order to, I'm just, I'm conscious that this might be quite complex. So we're going to start by just making it nice and simple and animating the position. So I'm going to set the initial position. I'm going to move my timeline indicator to zero seconds, the start of my video. And I'm going to set the X coordinate for my position in pixels to be zero. So my shape is going to jump to zero pixels along the X axis, the horizontal axis of my composition. I'm then going to press on this stopwatch icon next to the position. And this allows me to introduce a keyframe. A keyframe is essentially a, an information point, a, a, a bit of data within our timeline that says at zero seconds, because it's currently under zero seconds, I want the position to be these two values. If I move my timeline indicator along to, let's say, two seconds, and I decide I want my shape to be on the other side of my composition. So the other side of my composition, remember we go from zero to 1920 pixels, is going to be 1920. I'm going to type in 1920. And as you can see, once I press enter on the X axis, it's automatically going to create a new keyframe at two seconds. My Timeline indicator, which indicates what position of time I'm in at the moment that's being displayed on my composition, is at two seconds. So you can see that the shape has now moved to that other side of the composition. This line is just to indicate the path. Don't worry too much about that for now, but it just shows you roughly where the shape is moving. Um, there are some more cool things you can uh, change about that, such as uh, moving in curve shapes or other di uh, directions. But for now, we're just going to keep it nice and simple and just move it across the screen. So if I move my timeline indicator back to zero seconds and press spacebar, which is to play, you'll notice that my square moves from left to right. And that's your first basic animation in Adobe After Effects. We've moved a square from left to right uh, and 
all you can do now is make it much more complex and much more interesting. So we're going to um, try and maybe move it after this. I want after two seconds, it's now here. And let's say at three seconds, I want it to move um, to the bottom, to the center bottom of my composition. Well, half of 1920 is 960. So I'm going to type in 960 for the X axis. So that's going to move it back to the center. But I also want it to go to the bottom of my composition. So let's set that to 1080. And as you can see, it's now going to move to there. Lastly, at the end of my composition, I want it to go to a random spot on my, uh, my composition. So I'm just going to go to the selection tool, which is the top icon here, or you can press V on your keyboard. I'm just going to hold and drag it. And I say, I want it to end, let's say here. And now if I remove my timeline indicator back to the start, it's going to first move to the right, and then it's going to complete and go to all of those keyframes in turn at those second intervals. It's just looping so that once your timeline, um, once your play bar hits the end of the timeline, it's just going to loop. Um, and that just allows you to preview your animations. So as you can see, we've just created a very basic position animation in After Effects. Uh, and this allows us to uh, animate things in all sorts of cool different ways. So the keyframe theory is basically what you need to know for all of these other um, uh, properties within our um, transform options. So we're going to just quickly, if you want to delete all of these keyframes, all you have to do is press on the stopwatch. If you want to delete an individual keyframe, say I don't want it to go all, to the right, all the way to the right, but I want it just to jump straight to bottom um, center here. I'm just going to hold and delete that right like that. Um, so now, as you can see, it's going to take three seconds to reach the bottom and then it's going to jump up to the top. If I want to delete all of them, just press on the stopwatch. And now it's not going to move at all when I press spacebar. So I'm just going to quickly recenter just by going to a line. So I'm going to go center horizontally, center vertically. And we're going to quickly cover the other uh, transform options before I show you how we can make some of these animations look a bit cooler, uh, make them move in more interesting ways. So the next option that we had was scale, uh, which is this second option here. At the moment, it's set to 100%. Uh, like with the position, if we want to create a keyframe, we have to press on the stopwatch. So at zero seconds, I want it to be 100% um, in size. Uh, let's go to three seconds, and I want it now to be 50%. So it's going to go smaller. Um, and then at the end, I want it to finish at 200%. So I can just type in 200. Remember, they're linked, so it's going to apply to both X and Y axis. And when I press play, it's now going to scale um, to those sizes at those specific times using those keyframes. If we want to be do something a little bit more interesting, Maybe I'll just quickly undo that by deleting all of those keyframes and reanimating it by pressing on the stopwatch. So I've created an initial keyframe at zero seconds for 100%. I'm going to unlink these two. And at two seconds, I'm only going to change the Y axis um, to, let's say, 10. And then I'm going to change the X axis to, let's say, 400. And then finally, I'm going to finish at 100 and 100 just like we had at the start. And I'm going to press play. And as you can see, I can now animate those individual X and Y axis coordinates, uh, scale um, percentages for our shape. And I remember this is being applied to the whole layer. So if we did have anything else uh, within our shape layer, it would also be applied to that directly. Great, so let's try the last two. So we're also going to quickly try animating rotation very basic. I'm going to create an initial keyframe, move to the end, and I'm going to set an animation uh, rotation of, let's say, 264 degrees. As you can see, when I press spacebar, it's going to rotate in that direction. If I wanted to make multiple rotations by the time I've reached the end, I'm just going to change that initial value and say I want it to make it spin three times and then an extra 264 degrees. Oops. Um, then, as you can see, when I press spacebar, there you go. Now it's making three rotations, um, as well as an extra 264 degrees in this animation. 
Finally, opacity again was how transparent our layer is. So I'm going to set the opacity to 100% and create a stop, a keyframe at zero seconds. Move along to three seconds. I'm going to change it to, let's say, 80. And then actually at one second, I'm also going to make it go to 10%. And then finally, I want it to go back to 100% opacity. And it's just going to animate the transparency of our layer, just like that. So those are the basic four transformations we can make. Like I said, we can also do anchor points. It's a bit more complex, so I'll cover that another time. But just like that, we've been able to animate the opacity, uh, rotation, scale, and position of our shape. Now, in order to make our animation a little bit more interesting, what we might want to do is animate several of them at once. So, for example, let's try and create a box that jumps. So I'm actually going to change the um, uh, anchor point for my shape. I'm just going to press Y, move the anchor point to the cent to the bottom of my shape. Just hold command in order to make it a snap to there because I want the animation for position scale uh, and rotation to ori uh, originate from the bottom of my shape. I'm also going to move the shape to the bottom of my canvas. So in order to make it snap to the bottom, I'll just type in 1080 here. And as you can see, it's now aligned to the bottom of my composition. Once again, the anchor point is so, so important. As you can see, whereas uh, um, when we were changing the position before and the anchor point was centered, the box uh, is now fully visible because the anchor point is at the bottom of the box and no longer in the center. So now we're going to animate a jumping box. So to start with, uh, we need to change the position because we need to change whether it jumps or not. So I'm going to um, create a keyframe here at the bottom first. And then I'm going to, at one second, move it to its highest position. So I'm going to change the Y axis and I'm going to increase it to, let's say something like that. Then I need it to go back down to the bottom. So I need it to go back to 1080. And maybe let's do that at two seconds. Um, we will need to adjust the timing of this. This probably won't look quite right. Then we'll have a little bit of a rebound. Um, so let's add another bit of a higher, let's go slightly higher, not too much higher, something like that. And then let's go back to 1080. As you can see, if I press play, it jumps once, goes down, it makes a small jump. And then maybe let's do another small one. I'm just going to make it go very slowly. Just a small jump like this. There we are. Now we're going to have to compact those keyframes slightly more in order to make it a bit more realistic. All of these are going to happen in much quicker succession. Um, just by the law of how we jump and how objects fall. So maybe something like this. Let's try it. Let's try that. Well, that's quite quick. Okay, maybe let's extend it out a little bit more. Something like that. Okay, it's something. It looks like a jump. The timing of this is obviously not going to be perfect uh, because you would need to spend more time on making it look realistic. A lot of it uh, comes down to the illusion and how you feel about the jumps. That looks a little bit better to me. Makes initial jump. and uh, So you can animate a shape really simply and make it do something um, uh, creative like this. In order to create the initial spring effect, maybe you'd add, I'm not going to fully animate this shape because it would take quite a while to get it looking really good. But obviously in order to jump, you need to compact a little in order to um, get that spring effect. So I'm going to create an initial keyframe. Just by pressing uh, on this icon here, you can add a keyframe or remove a keyframe at any uh, specific time within your timeline. And then I'm going to compact it slightly. Let's change the um, let's move. So we're going to have it just sit there for a little bit before it makes a rather dramatic jump. Let's move that along slightly. 
timing isn't great. There we go. So in order to create that initial spring effect, what we're going to do is add our second animation. We're going to add scale. So just by pressing on the scale, we've added, introduced a keyframe. I want the scale to initially start off at its original dimensions, but maybe I'll try and make it compact a little. So as you can see, it's going to scale now towards our anchor point. And I'm going to just reduce it slightly, maybe say 80%. And then once it jumps, I want it to maybe go slightly longer than its original uh, dimension in the y-axis. And then once it goes back down, it needs to compact again. So let's go to 88%. And then maybe let's go to 106. And then let's go to 95. And then let's say the last few are just 100 from there onwards. I don't even need to add a keyframe for this last one because it's going to just extend to the rest of our timeline. So as you can see, it kind of makes an initial jump, but it's a bit too dramatic. So I'm going to introduce another one of these keyframes. So 100 here. So we get a bit of a spring effect in our animation. And one of the things that makes it look a little odd at the moment is that we don't actually have motion blur applied. Motion blur in animation is quite important in order to create um, the natural motion that we see in photographs and other videos that we see. Um, motion blur is captured by um, essentially the, the shutter speed of a camera. Um, and in order to make it look a bit more realistic uh, for us, we normally apply motion blur in order to seamlessly um, transition between the different frames. Um, so in order to apply motion blur to this layer, we just have to go to the motion blur icon and make sure that we tick the box underneath it for this layer. You'll also need to ensure that motion blur is turned on for the entire composition. And that's just this button here. If it didn't go blue, just make sure it's, uh, it's gone blue and that will allow you to apply motion blur. And that will make it look slightly more smooth. The motion blur isn't quite calibrated for this case. You have to try and calibrate the motion blur um, to the different lens requirements that you have your animation for. Again, that's much more advanced than just animating a few basic properties in Adobe After Effects. So we'll cover that on another time. Um, but this is the basics. So you can just turn on motion blur if you want it to be a little bit smoother. We've just created a very simple jumping animation. It's by no means Oscar worthy. Um, but we're just using some of those basic parameters and seeing what kind of cool creative things we can do. One other thing that I like to explain is how we can add easy ease into our keyframes in order to make them move a little more slowly, um, more interestingly. Um, so at the moment, if I go back to, let's set the anchor point to the center again. So go Y, hold command and center the anchor point. And let's just align the shape back to the center of the composition. So what we did before was when we moved our shape, so I'm just going to move it to the left a bit and create a keyframe and then move it along at two seconds and move it to something like that. When we move our shape, it's moving in a linear uh, motion. It's not really, there's no change in speed. It starts and then it stops. The speed is consistent from one keyframe to the next. And this can look pretty stale. It can look a little boring. It just goes and it's a very dramatic stop. What we can introduce is easy ease or ease in or ease out. And these properties essentially allow us to change the speed at which the shape moves, um, which in turn can make it look a little bit more interesting. So there's a few different ways we can do that. You don't have to apply it to all of the keyframes, but you can, for example, apply it to one or two. So if you go to the final keyframe in our animation, right click on it, go to keyframe assistant. You can choose easy ease, ease in or ease out. So ease in would refer to everything that happens before the keyframe. Ease out refers to everything that happens on the way out of the keyframe or ease, easy ease refers to both. And you can see the shortcut for that is F9. So if I go to F9 on my keyboard, it's automatically going to change that to an easy ease keyframe. So if I'm, 
now press play. As you can see, it kind of slows gradually before uh, reaching its final keyframe point. And this makes the animation slightly more interesting um, and allows us to make uh, not have a sudden stop once the square reaches its final position. Um, we can do that for the first one. So if we want it not to start abruptly, but we want it to start slowly and then become more interesting, we can just press F9 on that as well. As you can see, the keyframe changes and it's going to ease into making that movement and then ease out. And this makes it even more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and um, obviously you might not want to apply this to all animations. There are times when you want linear motion, um, but I'm also cautious to actually go into too much detail with this. Um, but if you want to quickly see this in a graph, if you are interested in this, you'll be able to see the, um, the change in, if you write, if you click on this icon here, you'll be able to view the graph, right click on this and select edit speed graph. Here you can see the rate of acceleration or speed in this case of our um, position um, attribute and the animation that we've made. So this is the first keyframe that we have. If I quickly remove this, go out of the setting, you'll see our first keyframe is at zero seconds, our second keyframe is at two seconds. If I go back to the graph, um, the first keyframe is at zero seconds, the second keyframe is at two seconds. And this shows us essentially the rate of speed for our motion. Um, so if it was a linear, so if I just quickly um, undo this and go to graphs and go to speed graph, we have to make sure that the correct attribute is selected in order to see the graph. You'll notice that we have a graph that shows us a very linear speed. So all the speed is consistent along the whole um, two seconds. It's just moving at, in this case, 438 pixels per second, um, consistently for two seconds from one keyframe to the next. Uh, and this gives us this very linear animation. Um, if we, however, apply e easy ease, so F9, and go to the graph, you'll see that it, the rate of speed changes. So it starts off slower at zero uh, pixels per second, at its peak, it goes to roughly 660 pixels per second, and then it goes back down, the speed decreases all the way back down to zero. And that's basically just like if you were in a car uh, and you start and you hit the acceleration, it's obviously going to take a little bit of time to accelerate to your maximum speed. And then just when you hit the brakes, your vehicle is going to move uh, slower and your acceleration is going to decrease and your speed is going to decrease as well. Um, so now if I play the animation, the speed will slowly pick up and reach its peak at one second. And as you can see, then it's going to be at its quickest. And then it's going to go drop back down to zero seconds where it's not moving at all. And this line here just indicates that there's no change. Um, and the cool thing about this is if you wanted to, you can actually adjust these values. Just press on either of these two keyframes. And you can adjust using these toggles. Um, and for example, say I want um, the start to start um, start keyframe to start even slower. I want there to be a very very gradual change in speed until it goes really quickly and then slowly drops back down. But the drop back down to zero seconds is much less dramatic or takes much less time because, as you can see, the peak has now shifted from one second to about one and two thirds. Um, I want this final change to be much, much slower. So now if I press play, it's going to go very slowly and then go very quickly to uh, finish the move. I can also drag this one. I can actually center it. Um, so this is the most dramatic. So we have a very little movement until suddenly it makes a really quick movement and then it slows back down and takes quite a long time to decelerate. So that would look something like this. So all of these kind of changes that you can make to keyframes and all of these basic things that you can um, transitions that you can apply or transform properties to your shapes or any other layer that you might have in After Effects already allows you to do a, a lot of really creative um, animations within um, Adobe After Effects. 
at the moment we've obviously done this for um, the scale or the position, excuse me. Uh, but this applies to any other of these properties as well. You can change the speed of your keyframes no matter um, what um, uh, attribute you're animating. Um, even if you were changing something more complex in the text color, for example, um, which you can also animate. Or, well, I can show you quickly for the shape if you want to. We'll just quickly leave the graph editor, have the shape. If we go into the contents and go to the rectangle one and go to fill, we can actually change the color of our shape uh, and actually animate the color that we have. So for example, if I go to zero seconds, at the moment it's this purple color. So I can press on the stopwatch and at three seconds, no, let's say two seconds, I want to change the color to red. And then I finish off going back to purple. So I can just copy, select and copy this first keyframe and just uh, using command C and command V, just paste it back at the, the final point as you can see now it's also going to change color um like so if i quickly go to the position if you want to quickly overview all of the attributes that you've animated for a layer just press u and it will only bring up those ones and it will simplify your timeline panel quite a bit i'm just going to quickly drag this position keyframe to the end just so we have a bit more time to work with uh, and then what i'm also going to do is just to quickly demonstrate the color on the graph editor. It's a very linear change. Uh, the, 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 the change is in units per second for color. So as you can see, it's at 154 units per second, and then it kind of drops down back to 104. Um, and this is the color change, and then it's at red here, and then it goes back to purple here. But if I ever wanted that change to be um, uh, eased in or eased out, what I have to do is select those keyframes I want to adjust. If I want to adjust all of them, press uh, F9 on the keyboard. Um, if you're on Mac, you'll have to press in FN, by the way, uh, to access F9. Go back to the graph editor, and now you can see the rate of speed has changed once again. So it goes slowly, reaches its peak speed, and then drops back down to zero, and then it goes again for the change back to purple. And now if I press play, as you can see, it's making that change um, like so. However, you could obviously make it, uh, you can also edit those ones. So if you want the change to, perp, uh, to red to be much less dramatic, adjust those markers here. And let's say for this one, I want the change to happen very quickly, right in the middle of our animation. It's going to suddenly change to red, suddenly change back to purple. And like so, you can see how you can animate all of these cool properties for all of these layers in Adobe After Effects. Um, and you can do this for any of those initial properties that we were looking at. If you want to re-see all of those options, you just got to go back to the arrow. Or if you want to bring up a specific property, there are shortcuts for all of these. So position is P. It'll bring up all of the position attributes for all of your layers. Uh, and then we have rotation, R. Uh, scale, which is S, and then we have T, which is opacity, a bit of an odd one. Uh, o is actually used for something else, so uh, opacity is the letter T, but the other ones just um, are the first letter of their words. Um, and again, you can just animate all of these properties um, for this layer. Um, so that was the basics of initially animating simple shapes in After Effects. Um, if you wanted to add multiple shapes, uh, just to quickly show you how to do that just make sure you don't have this layer selected again if you do have the layer selected you're going to add another shape within that layer so just like i said earlier within the content section we currently have one shape if you added another shape you'd have it under the same layer at the moment we've kind of just stuck to transforming the layer itself and so the best thing is to just deselect the layer and create a new shape so you have an entire new layer to work with and then you can transform and um, animate those attributes as well. Um, and that's the basics of using shapes in After Effects and the basics of opacity, position, rotation, um, scale. And then we also looked at color quickly and how to customize our shapes um, in different ways. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know. Um, it was great to see a few of you uh, sign in to watch it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. 
Um, do let me know if you have any topics that you'd like me to cover in future live streams. Like I did say, um, I'm going to try and do one once a week. So hopefully this way I can be, uh, it'd be easier for me to explain things to you. Um, if you have questions and I'll be able to answer those for you. Like I said, there will also be a live stream on the other channel, my design class for Photoshop. If you're interested in learning Photoshop and you want to, um, you want to, um, know um, more about Photoshop or ask questions about that, then do feel free to join that. I'm probably going to stick to Mondays for now, but um, yeah, if there are other days that you also want me to do, then do let me know. And um, thank you for uh, joining and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you in the next one.